What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today it is Monday once again, so what are we doing? We are looking into the Glass Nodes Insights weekly newsletter. Before we get any further, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Uh, while you're down there, in the top uh, few lines of the description is the link to library. Go join it, okay? If any time has been an illustration of why we should start using these decentralized options, it is today with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp all going blackout, okay? It could happen to Google Suites as well, all right? This is a, a monster that just got for whatever reason we don't know yet but something's happened to it okay and it's been many hours now so be sure to go follow me on library odyssey okay uh also down there is uh twitch which is like a, a twitter option and kindly leave me a comment just be civil in your discourse and my only request kindness and compassion are absolutely free just filter your thoughts through that if it's something that you disagree I encourage disagreement. Just be kind and uh, let's uh, be civil. Anyway, let's get started. We got the week on chain, week 40, 2021. The Bitcoin price has rallied strongly out of a zone of heavy accumulation, seeing around 1.75 billion worth of capital inflows per day. Wow. I like that image. The Bitcoin market has rallied strongly this week, breaking out of the recent consolidation range low of 40,931 and peaking at 49,044 over the weekend. After a fairly brutal September, this rally has brought with it renewed optimism for the last quarter of 2021. Similar to our observation during the rally in late July, a non-trivial volume of BTC changed hands during the recent uh, consolidation trading range. We can see this via inspection of the coin volume which has now returned to holding an unrealized profit this week we will analyze this return to profitability and how the fractals compare to previous previous market cycles we will also look into the mining market which continues to recover after the great migration commenced in may i love this i love this chart you know what i love about it this one two three a b c Okay, it's beautiful. And then one up, one, two, three down, and going up. This invalidates, if you know Elliott Wave, this is this is a beautiful move right here, okay? Um, all right, let's move on. Da, 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 da. Return to profitability. In on-chain analysis, we generally consider coins that are spent, especially for entity adjusted, adjusted variants, to have changed hands as existing coin holders sell and new buyers take possession. When prices consolidate in a range for an extended period and a large volume of coins transact on chain, this can be considered a zone of accumulation. As such, we consider this an established cost basis for many buyers. As prices rally above this trading range this week, we approximately 10.3% of the circulating supply return to an unrealized profit. We can therefore deduce that alongside the $29,000 to $40,000 range in uh, May through July, the recent lows of 40000 to 41000 represented a significant value add zone for buyers who stepped in and purchased to set a floor price or price floor. The total 86.6% of the circulating BTC are currently held at unrealized profit. If we inspect the breakdown of profitability between long-term holders and short-term holders, we can see that overall, Short-term holders benefited the most from this rally. Around 15.6% of the BTC supply is currently held by investors who purchased within the last 155 days or so and are at an unrealized profit. Long-term holders in profit currently hold 73.4% of the supply, leaving a remaining 11% of the coins held at a loss. Split 31 to 69 at a ratio uh, as a larger portion of the market return to profit, it creates incentives for some investors to take profits, but also can recover conviction to hold on to their winners. The magnitude of net unrealized profit has also reached an interesting milestone, bouncing off a NUPL value of the half, a 1.0.5, 
This indicates that the total unrealized profit held in the coin supply is equivalent to approximately 50% of the market cap, approximately $450 billion in global unrealized gains. If the market were to continue to trend higher into a bullish continuation, this flat fractal would be similar to both the 2013 and 2017 market. In both prior cycles, an NEPL value of 0.5 acted as a support level during major corrections as the market's profitability and conviction to hold was tested, bounced, and subsequently rallied higher. Conversely, falling below 0.5 again could potentially trigger more coin holders to spend coins in fear of seeing their unrealized profits diminish further. Let's see what they're talking about. This is the 2013 one where it went up, came back down, then hit a double top, down, down, down. Okay. This one, the 2017, came up. Uh, well, I guess this this one retest and then went on, 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 and on. Okay. So what are we looking at? What are we looking at? Looking at something like this or something like this. Okay, moving on. On-chain spending behavior. As the market rallies higher, it is valuable to observe the various cohorts who are transacting on-chain to establish a case for both capital inflows, outflows, and aggregate market settlement. This week saw a market decline in investors spending coins that were held at a loss. Realized losses fell to a multi-week low of around $175 million per day. On the other hand, realized profits rose sharply to $996 million per day. These observations are likely a function of more coins returning to profit overall, as discussed above. Profits taken by traders who, brought, who bought the recent lows. Investors who may have bought the March uh, through May tops, getting their money back to uh, Matt closer to or just above their cost basis. Given the market continued to given the market continued to hold most of the week's gains, this also indicates that around 175 billion or 1.7 yeah, not 175, 1.75 billion worth of capital is flowing into the market as buy side demand per day. The structural downtrend on old coin volume dominance continues this week, reaching a multi-year low of around 2%. In the pre-bull phase of 2019 to 2020, old coin volume represented around 4% of all volume moved on chains as a baseline. This spiked in 2020 and early 2021 as long-term investors took profit in the bull market. With old coin dominance at a multi-year lows, it is suggested two dynamics are at play. Old, either old hands have strong conviction and are not spending at these at the current prices, or young coin dominance is at a multi-year highs, which indicates the same liquidity liquid supply is transacting and likely being absorbed by new buyers, as noted in net capital inflows from the previous chart. Breaking down the on-chain volume by transaction size, we can also see that very large transaction sizes of around $10 million and plus continue to dominate. Overall, entity-adjusted transaction volumes have largely returned to the peak of between $13.6 billion and $16.8 billion per day. The rising dominance of large transaction sizes hints to the increased maturation of Bitcoin as a macro-scale asset with increasing interest from high net worth individuals, trading desks, and institutions. On the spending behavior of long-term holders, the overall profitability of spent coins has fallen to relatively low levels. Long-term holder SOPR has returned to a value of 2.0, which indicates that spent coins have a profit multiple of around 200% which is the aggregate cost of 24,000 for coins spent at 48,000. As longer term cyclical metric, the long-term holder SOPR usually trades in this range during late stage bear markets and early stage bull markets. This is a result of lengthy sideways price action, which compresses profit multiples, even for long-term investors. For short-term holders, we have also we also have relatively structured or constructive signals. With the 
short-term holder SOPR metric rallying back into profitability in bullish market structure, a return of the short-term holder SOPR to a value of 1.0 generally suggests that either short-term holders have stopped taking profits, else the metric would trend higher. This suggests conviction to hold remains, or some short-term holders are panic selling and realizing loss is often pushing the short-term holder SOPR slightly below one during price pullbacks. As a result, the SOPR value of 1.0 usually indicates market support, which in this case has played out. A return of profitability alongside positive or sustained price action indicates that sufficient demand is present to absorb spent coins, providing confluence to many of the charts discussed above. We have the weekly feature on, in all this this week is mining recovery. The Bitcoin mining industry experienced the most dramatic short-term disruption in all of history, with over 50% of the network hash power coming offline throughout May. Despite this massive impact due to its industrial base, the Bitcoin hash power network has been on a consistent path to recover ever since. After bottoming out in late July, protocol mining difficulty has risen by 39% with a further additional upwards adjustment of around 3.9% expected this week. Mining difficulty has now returned to the last 2020 levels requiring around 80 sextillion hashes to solve a block. That is 8 followed by 22 zeros. The difficulty ribbon is about to flip over and signal full recovery as the slowest 200 day moving average crosses over the fast 9 day moving average. The only comparable difficulty ribbon flip to the current market was following the December 2018 bear market capitulation event that took prices down 50% to 3k. The 2018 to 19 minor recovery, mining recovery took a total of 164 days to complete uh, completely reverse the bearish difficulty ribbon signal. The current market has been in recovery for 120 days and is likely to complete the flip after the next upwards difficulty adjustment. Finally, we can look to minor total revenues to assess overall income for the mining industry. Despite a 50% reduction in the block subsidy from 12.5 per uh, BTC per block to 6.25 BTC per block down back in the May of 2020 uh, having event, the total USD miner revenue is up significantly. Remember, miners have a capex, the hardware facilities, logistics, and OPEX, power, personal um, maintenance, etc. costs that are denominated in fiat currencies, comparing the current aggregate mining income of $40 million per day to revenues observed around 2020 halving event, we can see that the minor revenues are up, plus 275% since the pre-halving period of uh, $14 million to $18 million per day, and 630% compared to the post-halving period of $6 million to $8 million per day. Despite dramatic shifts in the mining market, multiple deep price corrections and halving events in May 2020, the Bitcoin block reward value uh, continues to rise, creating incentives for the market to adapt, innovate, and recover. Quite incredible, really. Well, that is it for this week. Thank you for listening. Also, if you want to go follow this, I would suggest it because they have these new uh, lightning node uh, and lightning network metrics that we read up uh, last week. I'm surprised they didn't do an update this week, but I imagine they will continue to update us as things move forward. Um, also, again, follow me down uh, in the description to Library Odyssey. It's the same thing, just different branding. Um, and I suggest using Library on your computer. And thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next one. Love you all. Peace.